cancers, especially of the colon, lowers death rates from all disease-related causes, thus being a potential life extender. So cabbage is good. And I think in the next 10 to 20 years, we'll have evidence showing that a vegetarian diet is superior. And that's what T. Colin Campbell says. And rice. Rice has a long history as a treatment for severe high blood pressure. Maybe that's why my husband doesn't have severe high blood pressure anymore. Every morning, he eats his rice and keeps him healthy. It also helps with kidney problems and diabetes. Recent studies show that rice in non-insulin dependent diabetics clamps down on the cholesterol synthesis and keeps blood insulin and glucose on an even keel. And if you can get everyone to lower his cholesterol by 10 to 15 percent by cutting down on fat and cholesterol in the diet, heart attack deaths in this country will decrease by 20 to 30 percent. The cultures with the very longest lifespans in the world are the Vilcambas, Combas, who reside in the Andes of Ecuador, and the Abkhazians, I hope I'm saying this right, who live on the Black Sea in the USSR, and the Hunzas, who live in the Himalayas of northern Pakistan. Researchers discovered a striking similarity in the diets of all these groups, scattered though they are in different parts of the planet. All three are either totally vegetarian or close to it. Garlic. Garlic has an awesome re, uh, reputation for its healing properties as early as 1500 BC, a little, little ways before us. Garlic was being used for such complaints as headache, throat disorders, and physical weakness. And Pliny in his Historia Naturalis, uh, and he was way back when, prescribed garlic recipes against 61 maladies, including gastrointestinal disorders, dog and snake bites, asthma, rheumatism, hemorrhoids, ulcers, loss of appetite, convulsions, tumors, and much more. Well, garlic is good for you. For centuries, Chinese and Japanese physicians have recommended garlic to alleviate high blood pressure. And I was reading also, you can take garlic, put a toe or a, uh, of garlic in your ear, and it'll get rid of an earache. You can also put garlic between your toes if you have athlete's foot. It'll get rid of the athlete's foot. Of course, you'll smell nice. <laughs> and another thing that's good for athlete's foot, you don't have to go to the uh, pharmacy and buy a cream or whatever. Uh, just straight white vinegar, concentrated. And if it, you have open athlete's foot, it will burn like crazy, but it will get rid of the athlete's foot. I know that personally. Yes, Virginia. Oh, fell snap the soap is good. We used to use it as when I was a kid when we had our ringer washing machines. And okay, honey. Honey was to the ancient Egyptians what aspirin is to modern medicine. And I know Joan talked about honey and what it has done and how, how it helped Keith. Yeah, and your honey? <laughs> Oh, I know what my honey does for me, too. He helps me feel very healthy. It is mentioned 500 times in 900 remedies in the Smith Papyrus, an Egyptian medical text dating 2600 and 2200 B.C. So they used it back then. You know, I've heard people say, well, um, people back then weren't intelligent, but my, oh, my, they put us to shame with their intelligence. The nectar of honey is universally hailed as an ointment to heal wounds, sores, and skin ulcers. 
Honey during wartime has been smeared on wounds as an antiseptic by ancient Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, Assyrians, and Chinese, as well as by Germans in the World War I. So they were really sweet smelling, weren't they? <laughs> Honey is excellent. So courage, hope, faith, sympathy, and love promote health and prolong life. A contented mind, a cheerful spirit is health to the body and strength to the soul. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. And as we read in Galatians 5, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and, and on and on faithfulness, temperance. So may God bless you today. I want to welcome everyone here.